Hello everyone here in Berlin to the IDI 24. Um, I'm working in the Otto Group IT, maybe in Germany Otto is a subject everybody knows, but all over Europe we have subsidiaries and I might show you a little bit about what we have around the world, meaning that we have uh, probably 20 uh, companies, uh, significant companies uh, here and uh, all over the world we have about 120, meaning employees we should have about 42,000 and um, we have different businesses like uh, maybe some of you know um, EOS, which is a financial part, the shops itself and we have a lot of uh, companies caring about special brands like Manufaktum, which is uh, handmade stuff, but there are dozens of other ones as well. So, our goals. We normally care about the growth, yes, of course, like every sailor, uh, and uh, profitability, financial network, frameworking stuff, investments, but uh, the f uh, owner of the company, Dr. Michael Otto, has one special one that is the corporate responsibility. And he takes that one very serious. So now a little bit to what is our strategy. Our strategy is uh, a cloud strategy, but we still have a lot of on-prem. So we're trying to get all our applications cloud native, trying to get container services, public cloud services, and spreading the data across the world on-prem and in the clouds. But that is a problem because we need new, new types of applications. Applications which are able to run on any cloud. There is uh, the picture, as you might have seen, is one of the uh, AI-generated pictures, and we try to focus on them, so we write that that one has generated, you might see the small sentence in the, uh, at the bottom. So in the end, we have a smooth, tr try to have a smooth transformation to the cloud um, for that part when the data is exceeding like a uh, special period of the time, like Black Friday, everybody knows, or if the Christmas business comes. So we get a little bit of a fl flexibility. Yeah, and still we have a lot of legacy applications like everybody on-prem. So, there is something called OGGPT. The problem we had is Everybody's talking about ChatGPT, but what happens if we put company data into that official model? Company data is then accessible by everybody. And that's not a good thing what we want to do, but we need to have access to them, the benefits of uh, ChatGPT. So, we are trying, and we tried, to create an own chatbot like OGGPT. The advantage is that we have the model, which is a large language model anyway, and we keep the trained data on site, on-prem. So we have uh, uh, both, both worlds when we try to connect them. And we did it in a very fast way. So we started in September 23, and it was Eight, ten weeks later, we had already a chatbot, uh, or GGPT, in place. We added features, a lot of features. And that's what now happens. We implemented it in Hamburg, in our holding, and now we are spreading it to our subsidiaries. Nearly every subsidiary we have already asked for a version of that one. And that's what is... Uh, now accelerating. What do we have else? We found out it might be good because everybody uses Teams 
in our company, and it's a very good tool. Everybody connects it. So we invented something called Kodi. Kodi is a chatbot, a chatbot that is uh, integrated in Teams and helps us on the daily business. Because we have on the, our campus in Hamburg, we have a so-called flexible desk system. Nobody of us has got a fixed desk, so we have to book desks in advance. So every morning I come into your office, what seat did I book? So, Cody is integrated in Teams, and as soon as I go into this, uh, the campus, it connects to our SAP system, looks up, ah, this is Werner, he has booked in building number so, the seat 62. That's one of the things, it gives me some notice about events on the campus. We have uh, about 5,000 people on the campus, so this is quite a big one. And it helps us to ask or to answer questions we have about our own internal stuff, like we have a lot of conference pages, we have a lot of manuals. And it's stuff, it all stays with us, so nobody else outside has the possibility to access what we have. And well, then we thought, ah, there are a lot of things um, everybody has in the daily business, like, oh, my, 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 my keyboard is broken. Okay, I need another keyboard. Why do I have to pick up a phone? I chat, Cody, I need a new keyboard. And so the order is fulfilled. All that is only the beginning. So, finally, we already found out it might be a good idea if somebody needs a system, a virtual machine. How can we support people with that one? So, we reduced a lot, a, lot, a real set of functions and parameters. We reduced it to four questions. Four small questions which we ask in the chatbot teams. Then we started, and 10 minutes later, the person has got his machine. Access to it, wonderful. What's coming next? We want to have a GPT integration, for a locker integration, and for especially the SAP integration, is, uh, there's a lot of potential inside. So, <clears throat> which challenges appear by doing that? There is a continuous change. The frequency of the changes becomes higher and higher, and the time to implement it is le less every time. And because of that, we need automation, more automation. And automation needs an API, which finally ends up in something like infrastructure as a code. Especially if we refer to the public cloud stuff, so then we put all these things together, the on-prem and the off-prem. And the problem is when we have a lot of vendors on site in our data center, we need a lot of resources to care about the different vendors, the different strategies, so less focusing is, possib is possible. And last but not least, the problem of young talents is a, is a real issue. Anyway, how try to, uh, do we solve that one? One uh, was we consolidated all our storage systems on one vendor on Dorado systems. Very competitive. We reduced the, the heights and we compacted it. The duplication worked fine. The encryption works fine. So everything stable, which gives us time for other issues, like caring about APIs, caring about automation. So in the end, it was easy to handle, and the API was uh, very powerful. So with the customer-centric uh, approach, we even had the chance to get features we liked into the system very easily and the feature requests have been handled very transparently and very fast. 
That's something which we didn't experience with the other one until yet. And uh, we had some challenges on-prem um, by moving a lot of things around because the business couldn't ha afford downtimes. It had to happen all the time online. So the support team helped us to design a solution and do the right sizing so we get on with all that stuff without any outage of the business. So, where, can, where do we go? As I already said, our target is the uh, interaction with all two worlds, and that's why I came with that two worlds. We have the on-site systems, on-the-prem systems, and we have the uh, multiple clouds. The transparent way of handling storage between both worlds is a very interesting part. Kubernetes and the doc containerization is a big part in that area as well. And already somebody said uh, something about security features on ransomware. Ransomware is becoming a real issue because if you all have all these systems, they're continuously attacked. So we have to be aware of ransomware and we have to protect us against all these things. And what uh, is helping us or might help us is if we use AI and train, can train AI for infrastructure management issues, which happen all the time. And so, in the end, the AI is one of the things which becomes interesting in that area as well. Saying all that, the problem is if you put all these features and all these functions into a storage system, the access time is, needs to be still very quick. And the, the more data comes, the more important access time becomes. And uh, everywhere is said capacity is increasing and all these kind of things because of, in our case, we are having a lot of logs coming up because we want to know what the customers, what all our system do. It's a, it's a very big amount of data which comes. So, thanks. And um, we came, as we said already, um, we came with the, because of the technology and uh, the service was the impressive stuff, so we stayed because of the service. Thank you very much.